Hello, everybody. My name is Alejandro Brubaker. I'm the co-founder of Sugar Skull Creative, also one of the animators here. Today, we're going to be talking about how to break down the Rescue's game plan graphics package that we created for NBC Sports using Sapphire and After Effects. All right, so let's dive in. First thing I want to do is I should show you guys how the package looks. Very cool. So let's go back to After Effects and start working on how everything's put together. First of all, our theme was to do a behind the scenes, coach's room, slide projector style looks that you ever, so the viewer would feel like kind of like they're, they were part of the team. That's what kind of the game plan, they're creating the stuff that's gonna happen for the next show. The, we began doing that by making some uh, uh, stylized frame that we're gonna use. So here's kind of a like frame we designed in Photoshop. This is gonna be like our basis to create all of our film strips in the remaining of the package. The great thing about this is the Photoshop's work super well at After Effects, obviously Adobe products, everything was really nice. We actually will go into import our file. It's right here, bring it as a composition, retain layer sizes. So this is gonna make us keep all the layers that we created really nice and accessible. Import it, keep the merged layer styles into footage because that's gonna keep all the styles that we liked that we created in Photoshop. And we can see it right here, how it brings some, comes in super clean and nice. We're gonna end up replacing this layer right here and add some footage that the rescue has provided for us. So let's check that out. So here we go, as you can see, that has the footage embedded in the, into our layers. One thing we wanna do from here is actually, is create a look that is gonna look like it's being lit from behind. So it looks like a film strip, just adding some light to it. The way we're gonna do that is gonna duplicate our video layer, make it a screen. And we also wanna make this just like edged look. So one thing we already created is a mat, as you can see right here, where things gonna get cut out. So here I'm gonna use that alpha off of mats, so you just have the layers. We also wanna give it a little more oomph. So for that, we're gonna end up using the Sapphire Glow. We, I really like using Sapphire plugins versus regular out of the box plugins just because they have so many more, so many more settings. You can really customize them. Also the Glow in uh, Sapphire has a really nice bloom versus the out of the box one you can think where the colors can get really blown out or even get some really bad banding. I'm also gonna add some tint to it to reduce some of the colors behind it. And as you can see right here, this is the kind of like, you can see the black and white look. It's all comp together, give me a little nice look. If you we go now to the next version, you can see we have everything set up pretty good. Now I have, that's the final look that we liked. Works nice. From here, what we wanna do is create a bunch of different frames so we can create a film strip. So we wanna, here's an example of some of them that created with the logos, footage, etc. This is gonna be kind of our composition. We're gonna use this to build our animation. So just, so we have right here, you can see, I'm gonna zoom out. You can see all the different frames that I'm adding right here. Of course, right now, there's no movement. All it is is just the video moving inside of it. We're gonna do, the way we're gonna move them is by creating a, a null. And we're gonna make that a position null. I'm just naming this so I know what it is. And parenting all, all these guys to a position null. And now with the, with the null, we can move that back and forth anywhere we like. Here we have it set up already. This is the movement that we finalized and we're happy with it. Ending at our games plan, our, our logo animation. And the easy thing to do is we can duplicate it now. The way we created this, we can duplicate it and just replace some of these frames with different frames that we created. So now we have a variety of film strips to create our environment. So let's start building the open. So from here, since we have this open, let me show the beginning of it. You can see right here, we have our establishing shot. You know, it looks kind of cool. Everything's coming in real fast. But as you can see, everything is really flat. I mean, there's no real separation for it. So the first thing we wanna end up doing 
it's going to add some S blur, basically a sapphire blur and levels. Where we, this way we're pushing everything out and separating it so it gives it almost a depth of field look. You see, you see the style. So now you can see the separation, everything. We added the blur and we also added the levels to crush the colors. You can see if I turn it off and on, you can see it crushed the colors to give it atmosphere and the blur as well, sapphire blur. And again, same thing, I'm using sapphire blur because that's such a really nice amount of presets. I mean, and also settings that I can tweak it exactly how I want. Um, also, I'm, I want to tweak it the way I like it. If I reset this, you can see it comes, comes out super blurry. But what I want to do is just keep it at like a, a base level of 10. And you just still, you still get some detail, but also separation. Once that is done in this piece, we want to kind of add this, the remaining of it, which is a film strip at the bottom. And then you can see from here, it goes from our establishing shot. Oh, I'm good if I turn it on. It goes from our establishing shot to the rest of the to the rest of the animation. But right now, there, it's really it's just kind of just linear. Nothing really is changing about it. So we want to make it a little more dynamic, make it just more interesting for the viewer. So in, what we're gonna do in our, in our next version, we're gonna add um, a little bit of push in. We're doing that with a scale null right here that we parented. We're actually giving it a, as you can see the keyframes, we're giving it a sense of the camera pushing in and out, just a little more exciting and just dynamic look to it. You know, like a little rack focus kind of style looking. From here also, another thing we're gonna do is going to be we're going to open, we're going to do a, um, from here, what we're going to do is, is do a, okay, so from here, what here what we're going to do here is do a quick crash zoom in here, as well as we're going to add a little bit of glow blur to the end. And I'm doing that again. I'm basically duplicating the bottom part, adding it as a screen and adding again, my Sapphire blur. So I'm blowing it out to the beginning and then slowly dissolving to my resolution, to my logo resolve. So you can see now it moves a little more, just has a little bit more dynamic movement altogether. Moves in, moves out, and a little bit of like finishing to the end. For the next part, what we're gonna do is start adding some light to it, you know, some, some flares. And, and I think that's something that Sapphire is super strong at creating is making really nice light effects and comping effects to your composition, which is something I really enjoy doing. What we're doing with that, and actually what we're gonna use that in the builder. I'm gonna show you the examples that I made right here by turning these on. So you can see I'm adding these kind of atmosphere glows, highlights to the, to the graphics and let me show you how I created that. So we're going to create a new solid. From here, we're going to add the S effect, which is base, which is the builder. Right now, those things, nothing's built onto it, of course. So we need to build something. I could actually load the preset that I created or just make it from scratch. So what I'm gonna do right now is make it from scratch. So I'm gonna go edit, edit effect, opening the builder itself. From here, there's two things I'm gonna end up doing. I'm gonna add a light leak and a lens flare and combine them together. I, I load light leaks. The reason I'm using light leaks is because I want a little bit of movement on the edges. It has a little bit of that uh, purposeful mistakes on it. So I you know, put it right here, go to my source. You can see how it, you can also play it, see how it moves. One thing I like to do is use a lot of the, uh, I think for a really base way to start is to use some of the presets that they've created. I think it's such a nice, fast way to work. Saves you a lot of time starting from, instead of starting from scratch and then you can also tweak them as you like them. I'm gonna use a subtle but fast edge blow because I don't want too much, just enough. As you can see, it's just slow on in the end. There you go, on the edges. And then I'm gonna add a flare lens flare here I could, I could even add it right here if I wanted to one thing that I don't want to, that I don't like doing this is because uh, this way is because if I if I change the light leak and then the lens flare 
the light leak is dependent on the lens flare back and forth. So I want to actually combine them together. And I use it a layer node. So I use my light leak, add that to the foreground. My lens flare, I'm adding it to the background and add that to the results. So there, here we go. But of course, now you can't even see the lens flare, right? So we need to turn down a little bit of the, um, of the foreground opacity, which is right here. So I'm gonna turn it to 0.4. 24. Now you can see the flare. And also, so now that you have this layer, you have a lot of different really quick ways that you can that you can tweak this and everything's co-independent and it's nice, or you can come back and just tweak just that. It gives you a lot of a lot of many options. So, so I'm decent okay with this, but there's something I really want to change because I want to make the flare a little, I want to adjust the flare. So I'm gonna say okay here. As you can see, there's my there's my there's my example that I created, but the flares really looks like an out of the box, really stock flare. And all I'm trying to do is I should make some highlights, some nice flares with it. For the flares, again, once go back to the presets and choose the the flare that I specifically want. So I'm gonna load a preset again. The one I'm looking for right now is gonna call bright spotlight. That's the kind of look that I'm looking for. Okay, now you can see the difference. Again, it kind of really looks really like I would say very lens flary, really out of the can. So I want to take some stuff. I just want to like uh, edit it a little bit. So I'll go back in here, and all I really want to keep is kind of like the center stuff. So I'm going to turn all these guys off. And leave that as some nice highlight that I like. Okay, I hit OK. Come back and there we go. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Of course, I wanna, I'm gonna of course tweak the size and how it looks on on the in the style. And you can see one thing that I did already. Once I make it, I like to save my presets. So if I load my preset here on my this is my preset on the builder. I can look for a preset that I created for the Redskins. This one right here. Load. And there we go. So that's the flare that I created for this project. So let's go back and look at how the other ones look. So we have these flares here. We have nice highlights coming up. So basically now we have some atmosphere that moves through the project. It just makes it look a little bit more realistic and more interesting altogether. And of course, next thing to add, who doesn't like, let's just add some, uh, let's add some particles. Everybody likes particles, basically just starting to add more depth to our, to our project. You can see these particles right here coming out, these gold particles. These are pre-rendered particles that we, that we created just to make it move faster. We're also using the color gold because almost all of our lighting that we use on this project is blue. We want to have a little bit of kind of separation from it. You can see right here is nice style. So everything looks real. So now we're starting to get, you know, just more interest. We want to keep everything moving and look very dynamic. Finally, the last thing we want to do is kind of do some last finishing touches. So for what that, I'm going to add a blur vignette. Again, I'm using uh, the S blur. So all I'm doing here is adding a blur vignette. As you can see, I have a mask surrounding it. The mask is also intended to look a little bit like a frame, like a film film frame, not just totally square. When we're just we're just blurring a little bit the edges at the end of the frame, so we have a a look a little bit of uh, that this was shot in uh, with with lens in a film. Then we're gonna use a little bit of super rack focus at the beginning. You just add a little bit more blur, a little fake motion blurs. Um, you can see right here, if I go back to where's, 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 where we added it, it's a teeny bit of, teeny bit added, but that just gives you a little bit of extra detail to it. And then finally, I'm, I like to add one thing, another Sapphire plugin called the Warp Chroma. And I think this plugin is pretty cool to make it things look just like a final touch and make it look a little realistic. It reminds you of adding uh, the look of like old TVs or TV pixels. It separates these colors, like this two red, 
green and blue. It's, it's really it's pretty subtle. Let me just turn it on and off for you guys. So you can see it's a tiny bit subtle. To show you a little bit better, if I turn this to two, you can see how now you start getting that color difference right here. But I don't want it that high. I want a little bit, just a tiny bit of uh, separation of the colors, making it just a little bit more, just adding, just adding more details. As you can see, if you start, when you, if you ever load this plug plugin by itself, it looks like this. And that's going to, you know, it's going to be really difficult to get to achieve the quality look. So one thing, again, one thing I like to do is go back, load it, something that is already has, has already has been worked on. I like the subtle one. And if, and if for me, it comes in as one. I think it's a little too strong for my like, so I'm going to turn it on to 0.3. And then you can see that here it is. And here's our final one. So let's check, let's, uh, if we go back, see how it looks, let's check it out. All right. Well, again, my name is Alejandro Brubaker. I'm the co-founder of Trigger Skull Creative and Animator. I hope you found this helpful. This After Effects and Sapphire breakdown of the Redskins game plan. Thank you very much.